Happy holidays from the dinner table of history. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. We're about to shuffle through time to see how well we know our iconic holiday foods. And a portion of today's episode is sponsored by Honey, but more on that a little later. Uh-huh, the holiday season, getting us all excited for presents and family visits, in that order. Yeah. Uh, but the best holiday traditions come in the form of... Food. Cheese balls, sausage balls, chocolate covered peanut butter balls. Bring on the balls, y'all. Oh, I love a good Christmas ball, but we gotta get our minds off the balls Done. and onto the pucks, cause we're about to shuffle our way through holiday food history. It's time for the Shuffleboard Game, Holiday Food Edition. Welcome to the Happy Holiday Shuffleboard Game Zone. Yeah, in each round we're gonna be given a beloved holiday food and we gotta guess when that food became a holiday tradition by shuffling our pucks to the corresponding time period down there in the triangular area. Time period, yeah, that's the time period. And look down there in the triangular area, you will notice that it ain't decades. We're talking centuries. centuries. Whoever's closest to the correct century wins the round. Bunk fest rules are still in effect, but hey, newsflash, for the first time ever, there may be a repeated century on the board, which makes me think that there will be a repeated century on the board. I do not like this. Usually there are not, but we wanted to make this even more complicated than it already is. I don't like that. The winner's gonna get their own personal blessing from Tiny Chase. Really? Okay. Look at the size of this cloche. Good God! We actually stole this cloche from Smosh. From one of their grills? Do not tell them, okay? <laughs> it's like a grill top. Oh, it's a gingerbread house from Christmas celebrations of old. <laughs> and I mean, it says it on here, Christmas, you know? Uh, oh, okay, there you go. You're just gonna, gonna give it a nice little huh? And then this. Does that make whoever made this feel bad? Nicole, that makes you feel bad? Sorry, yes. Nicole. Why does it taste like hot glue? Uh, I don't know about that. All right, Rhett, you wanted the Taco Bell shuffle, so you have to go first, which is a disadvantage. Happy Christmas. Listen, you know me. I love everything. Easy to please. I actively dislike gingerbread houses. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, you found something that Redster doesn't like. Welcome to my world. Gingerbread houses. Nothing about them do I like. Name something about a gingerbread house, Link. You have to work with children. Don't like that! You have to make it structurally sound. Don't like that! It tastes like gingerbread house. Definitely don't like that. Yeah. So when did they come up with this stupid idea? Well, we're really getting in the spirit of the season, aren't we? <laughs> I almost took gingerbread history in college as an elective, but I decided not to because I hate gingerbread houses. But I think this might be something that happened uh, you gotta make gingerbread and then you gotta realize you can build with it. I think they happen the same day, probably. <laughs> you think the day you come up with gingerbread you realize you can build a house with it? No yeah. way, my friend. <laughs> no, no way. I think this is 1800, which puts me safely in bump fest proof placement. <laughs> okay. That's a little light. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, well, you, hopefully you did not. Uh, calibrate. It also hit something in the year 1300 and just stopped. You know so. what? I'm gonna do you a flavor here because I think 1800 is wrong. I think this is much earlier than that. So I'm going to bump you in this bump fest to 1800 just to get you the heck out of here. You get what you want and I get what I want, which is the right answer, which you may be on currently. I do like icing and that's why I just ate that bite, just in case you're wondering. Icing was pretty good on that. I'm about to hit your snowman from the backside. <laughs> 1800 it is for you, Rhett. Come on, don't come back. No, thank you. What'd you put Here me on? Go. You put me on 1200. I gave you a better placement than you even wanted. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're welcome. Oh, gosh. Stevie, just... what's the right answer? While an early form of gingerbread can be traced back to the times of ancient Greeks and Egyptians, the iconic gingerbread house became widely popularized and associated with Christmas thanks to the story of Hansel and Gretel by the Brothers Grimm in the 1800s. <laughs> oh, how yeah, could you be so buddy. right? Yeah, get yeah, Hansel and Gretel up in there, yeah. Hansel and Gretel is not a Christmas tale. It is now. You're welcome. 
Before we guess when our next historic holiday food debuted, this portion of today's episode is sponsored by Honey, America's number one shopping tool. That's right, it's more than just an adorable little button at the top of your browser, it's mm -hmm. a tool. And what does this tool do, you ask? Well, I ask that question every time I'm at the tool store. They call that the hardware store. I like to call it the tool store. Okay, well, Honey is a great shopping tool. It automatically searches for promo codes so you don't have to. And Honey works with products you already buy on sites you already shop at. For example, Link, here's a tool for you there. Uh, what do you think that tool does? I believe it slices your zucchini into noodles. Uh, well, you could probably do that with a circular saw, but typically you would saw wood with it, not zucchini. Fine. But while you're shopping, Honey pops up, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons for the site you're on, and if Honey finds a working code, you're officially ready to save yourself some money. Money! Honey found coupons for this saw, which saved me $26.99 at checkout. That's almost $27. It is almost. Saving money is yeah. fun. Almost as fun as an unsupervised trip to the tool store. You can add Honey to your browser for free at joinhoney.com slash GMM. That's joinhoney.com slash GMM so they know that we sent you. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks again to Honey for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. And now, for real, let's meet our next holiday food. Oh, we get two holiday foods. Yeah. Well, it's, it, they're both latkes. Yeah, so the latkes closer to Link, those are present day latkes. They're made with potatoes, and then the latkes that are closer to Rhett, those are the OG latkes that are made uh, with fried ricotta cheese. Oh, good. So Dang, that one you're good. guessing when the original latkes were I thought I invented. loved that tater latke until I had the ricotta latte. This is the tater latte. Oh, it is? Latke. <laughs> this is the ricotta latke. Oh, well, I like the tater one. I like them both, man. Dang, that's Stack some good em. stuff. Stack them, man. Man. All right, you've taken the early lead. No. So you gotta go first. I've never, you know, like, studied Jewish history, but I have hung out with Stevie quite a bit. Hey. She smells of the latka. Laheim. <laughs> And uh, I ask her lots of questions about Jewish heritage and Jewish eating customs and stuff like that. And most of the time she's just like, do we have to talk about this? I'm more um, than just that. More yeah, than right, just yeah, Jewish. Yeah. Is this all I am to you is just a source of Jewish knowledge? Well, does that mean you know the answer? No, because we haven't talked about this specific thing. The only thing I know about Jewish breads is the unleavened bread from when they had to, they didn't have time to do, let it rise when they had to leave Egypt. Yeah. And that was way before any of these decades. <clears throat> Centuries, you mean, but yes. Mm, okay, maybe about 1500. It's going for 1500, it's a big slot. Whoa, I mean, You've safely on... in the year 2000, which is uh, almost assuredly not correct. Yeah, I like the fact you're on something that's wrong, definitely. But you're surrounded by 1500, 1200, 1600. I could do the reverse bump and get you out of there. This Reverse so bump's difficult. risky though. You've had trouble with that in the past. This one could definitely go way back to uh, uh, the earliest slot, 1200 on the board, but then 1300 is on this side. I've really got to try to reverse bump you back while taking control of this board. Be careful. My answer officially is 1200, as early as we can go on this board. Okay. Let me give a nice little bank off the bat and then bump you towards me. You've had trouble with the reverse bump. You haven't quite gotten the angles yet. That's that's really unsatisfying for the viewers. I think they're thinking, you know, you should give them another chance. Oh, okay, well, what do I get? If I okay, give, if I, if, if I give thou this, what do thou me get? Then, <laughs> I don't all know. right, then any time into the future, you get one redo at your discretion without any input from me. Not just a miss reverse bump redo. I'm desperate. If thou grants thou opponent a, a sympathy mulligan. mulligan. Sympathy mulligan, thou receives an automatic mulligan. Anytime into the future, perpetuity. You go with this? I mean, that's generous, man. Yeah, 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 I'm I just with feel it. so bad. Pro proceed. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, except the way I wanted to do it the first time. Okay. There we go. Now I've done it. Thank you for your sympathy mulligan. Okay, but I'm holding on to that mulligan hard. You still have a chance of winning. I don't know how, but. No, I don't. 
A rabbi in Italy named Rabbi Kalonymus Ben Kalonymus, maybe, <laughs> introduced the fried ricotta cheese pancakes to the Jews of northern Italy and quickly turned latkes into a holiday tradition in the 1300s. Ooh, wow. I was right. So that kind of redeems my double. Well, you said 1200. Oh, I did? <laughs> but I mean, 1300 is close right. to 1200. And... I get the point and I'm not proud of it. Yeah. Eggnog! It's Christmas time in my tummy. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of eggnog more than the taste of it. I actually love the taste more than the idea, but not much more. Well, we should hang out more often. <laughs> How's that even possible? <laughs> yeah, great question. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's gonna have to get really weird. Um, so I won the last round. Does that mean I go first? No, because we're tied now, and that goes back, it reverts back to who won the last game. I love it. So it's me again, Margaret, <laughs> for the for you Ray Stevens fans. <laughs> uh, Thank you, that was for me. Huh? Oh man, that was only for you. Just for me. <laughs> My mom went to high school with Ray Stevens. I know this. Okay. No one else uh, cares, just play the game. So I have a mulligan, which makes me feel warm inside, just like that eggnog, which has no rum in it, man. Eggnog needs to be refrigerated. Or just consumed immediately. Or, or, or consumed immediately. I mean, because they've been drinking milk. Ever since Great. cows popped out teats. I don't know. I'm gonna, I, I think this might be 1700. And I don't really have anything besides just cosmic intuition to go on. That's a nice little traverse there. Huh. Yeah, put it, I mean, I don't, what, what is the nog part of eggnog? Mayonnaise? Yeah, definitely, it's mayonnaise. <laughs> I don't know what the nog is. This is a bump fest, I could reverse you again, but my track record is 50-50 today. Yeah, you've used your mulligan. 1700 seems late to me. 1800 was a gingerbread house. I think eggnog came before a gingerbread house. So I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with 1700. I'm not gonna try to get you out of there, but I'm gonna try to get on the other side of it. Okay. My official answer is 1600. Whoa. Stop, 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 stop! No! Was no. That was uh, interesting. Now the only way you can win is if it's 1300. Eggnog is a frothy concoction of eggs, milk, and sugar. Eggnog originated in Europe but after making its way to the American colonies, it became a popular holiday drink in the 1700s. Hey! Good work, Rhett. Good work. You you won no matter what, I think. But oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, I mean, hey, let's, You're let's, right. let's have some eggnog. Oh, we got some dressing. They call it stuffing at Thanksgiving and it goes in a turkey. Mm, man, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Ain't nothing wrong with a little stuff in mime. And you put stuff in mime? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Oh, the stuffing mime's here. Everybody quiet. Hmm. Yeah. It's like breadcrumbs. It's like spicy breadcrumbs. Spiced breadcrumbs, not spicy. I'm afraid if I do too much thinking out loud here, I'm gonna give you the answer. So I'm not gonna, you know what? I love stuffing, I call it dressing. I have an idea of when it originated, but I'm gonna keep it to myself and let my puck speak for my answer. All right, I'm looking at his eyes to see what he's aiming for. I think he could have been aiming for 1400, but he stopped at 1500. I mean, this is such a turkey shoot. It's akin to a crap shoot when you know even less. With these centuries, man. When did they first dice up bread and shove it into a turkey? This is post-turkey era. The turkey I, era. It's gonna be tough to bump you out of there, but I've gotta try it. This is so good. I have no clue. I mean, once you take the stuff you don't eat out of a turkey, it's just invited to be stuffed. It's like the moment they started prepping turkey, they probably started stuffing turkey. I'm glad I didn't do my thinking out loud. I'm gonna guess 1400, which is gonna obligate me to get past you. What are you on? Yeah, it's covered up. 1500. 1500. I don't like the idea of you being there. I'm going for a reverse bump out again, because I have to. Here we go. Has Link learned his lessons? 
Ooh, nice. Nice. Now I, okay, I the, figured it out. The man. reason I didn't think out loud is because this has to be post Thanksgiving because it's a Thanksgiving tradition and Thanksgiving started in like. Oh. I, it, I, 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 I was thinking he probably won't pick, American up, holiday. He won't pick up on this. Ow. So, And I think Thanksgiving happened in the 1500s. The first Thanksgiving feast back in 1621, yeah. fowls such as turkeys were stuffed with herbs, onions, and nuts, but only to flavor the meat. This stuffing left the animal cavities and became a Thanksgiving side dish unto itself in the 1800s. Okay. Well, I'll take that point, but man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not proud of my showing today. Yeah, I'm not either. And here we have donut. Sh oh, su suf suf gun suf ganiots suf ganiot suf suf ganiots. We got suf ganiots suf gani suf ganiot. Stevie, how do you say this? It's suf ganiot. Oh, suf ganiot. So it's a. Um, Y'all got this from a donut store, I can tell. So we've got a raspberry filled donut. Jelly filled donut. You call it a souf Um, It's good. Okay. We're tied. And it's a bump fest. So, But you can't bump in, in the, the last final round, round of bump fest. And because I lost the previous game. You get the advantage, of which going means first. going first. Yes. So you go first. Because you can't bump me, I get to box you out of whatever I assess to be the right answer. But I have a mulligan. Don't forget about that, Sullivan. You ain't got to use it today. I don't have to, but I might. Okay, let's see. The last time we were talking about Hanukkah and latkes, I believe the answer was 1600. I think these, once you start filling stuff, it's like that's more advanced than making a latke. So it's definitely later than 1600. So we're at least 1700. 1800 is way back there. They've spread it out so I can't be strategic. I have to be assertive. So I'm gonna try to nestle in my answer of 1700, but on the side that makes it harder for you to get everything beyond it and 1800. Wow. This is advanced techniques. I can tell you're sweating my technique. Oh, a little light and a little to the right. Mm. But I'm okay with that because it makes your life difficult. You can't touch me, graze me at all because that's considered a bump. Again, not pretty, but I gotta do what I gotta do. I was thinking as well that 1700 was a very good guess. I could also see 1600, even though it's been guessed, because that was the year that the Jews really started experimenting with bread products. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to just basically get past you. And the saving grace here is not too much pressure on this one because I get two if, I don't, if I'm not happy with my first one. Oh man, that's, that's nice, man. I gotta hand it to you, unless I'm lucky on the point of 1900. While jelly donuts weren't around during the original Hanukkah, the tradition of fried foods, especially fried balls of dough, evolved over time in Jewish cultures around the world. The jelly-filled sufganiyot came to be as Jewish people fled from Europe to the Middle East and mingled their recipes together, creating this iconic Hanukkah dish in the early 1900s. 1900s. Dang it, Lake! Again, not pretty at oh. all, but I will take this win gladly. Uh, I, couldn't have won, I couldn't have won no matter what. Yeah, baby. Link, you receive a blessing from Tiny Chase. Oh, come on in, this Tiny so Chase. so warm. God bless you, everyone, except for you. God bless you, though, not you. Well, I didn't know I specifically got a non-blessing. Yeah, it was, it's, more of a, it's more of an insult. Thanks, thanks for, for nothing. No, thanks for subscribing <laughs> and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. Whoa, I've seen so many internet videos at this point, I just think they're about to like, right. hit a telephone pole. <laughs> it's like, it's Woo! like, Go it's off like, a like you just think something's gonna, bad's gonna happen. Well, maybe something did, I don't know, but they got the video to us. That's all that matters. Click the top link to watch us determine the best way to eat PB&J and Good Mythical More from all these combinations. And to find out where the Will of Mythicality is gonna land. To get the Red and Link Plus, she's joined Third Degree Quarterly or Annual by December 31st. Visit mythicalsociety.com for details.